First John. Page number 1619, if you're using your defined King James Bible. And we will read all of chapter 1 and into the first few verses of chapter 2. And I will preach from these portions of Scripture, I believe. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. My little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Our Father, I thank you that we can come before the throne of grace, where we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, Father, we look unto thee today. We ask of you to show yourself mighty. And Lord, that you might help our hearts unto thee. And uh, let us learn of thee and grow in grace and knowledge of thee. Thou art the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. And Lord, we think of those that we uh, uh, mentioned earlier today who have the uh, raging battles, dear God. God uh, desiring uh, grace to help in their time of need. Lord, there's physical battles and spiritual battles, emotional battles. And Lord, there's so many battles going on, and I don't know the need of everyone who uh, will hear this message. Lord, there may be some who might listen to it later. Lord, and there's those that are here. God, I do not know the needs of every heart, but Thou knowest. Lord, I pray, God, that You might help us on today, and that our mind might be consumed with Christ, and that He would be glorified. And we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I am looking at this thought over the next few weeks on the road to revival. And we will start out on the road to, to revival with this message today. Do we walk what we talk? Do we walk what we talk? And you'll see in verses 5 through verses 10, uh, you'll see this then is the message we ever heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ. His Son cleanses from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, right. and His Word is not in us. You will notice in uh, verse 6, verse 8, and verse 10, all start with the same phrase. If we say. If we sigh. These are the words of talk. And many in our society like to do that. I would say that many talk too much and say the wrong things. But many people just like to talk. 
Do they like to be taught so that uh, people can hear them or so that they can hear themselves? I do not know. But it is always more important to have something to say than just to say something. Amen. But these words, these are words of talk. Words of talk. And I say this, if any man sigh, or if we sigh, he says in 1 John 4, 20, he uses this same uh, idea in verse, in verse number 20 of chapter 4. He said, if a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. And I say there's a truth to this that we must understand. There's a, things that we say, that we talk. But I ask the question, are the things that we talk the same things that we walk? Do we walk what we talk? I look at this and I, I, I would say a, a, a comparison, a challenging thought, not, not about the talk, but about how we walk. I ask this, do we talk one way and walk another? I mean, look at verses 6 and 7. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, and us from all sin. Do you notice that there's a, a, a comparison, there's a challenge for us to walk what we talk? And Paul, or not Paul, but John, through the Holy Ghost, deals with this. The Apostle James uh, the Lord's brother uh, deals with the same thing in James uh, chapter 2 in verses 14 through 18. We will find him saying it this way. What does the prophet, what does the prophet, my brethren, though a man may say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? Hmm. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, then one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you, or show you, show thee my faith by my works. So we find that James says, though a man may say and have not, in verse number 14, you say, verse 16, and you, and you give them not. A man may say, show me, show me. Not only is it what we say, but it's what we show. James says, uh, uh, James says it deals with works. But John deals with a walk. They're the same thing. Do we walk what we talk? I noticed some things about this walk that we need to consider as we think on the thought. Do we walk what we talk? I see three things. I see the options of our walk, the origin of our walk, and the outcome of our walk. And those three things uh, need to be dealt with today. And so we see the options of our walk would be the first thing we would deal with. There are clear options and there are contrasting options. Very clear options. Now before I go any farther, I'll have to tell you we will deal with who has these options. Because not everybody has the option of how they walk. But we, we do if we're born again. The Holy Ghost through the Apostle John is writing concerning two things in this book and we've dealt with this before. He is dealing, dealing with Fellowship with Jesus Christ. We have fellowship. Our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. He is dealing with the idea of fellowship with Jesus. But He's not only dealing with the idea of fellowship with Jesus, He's dealing with the idea of fullness of joy. He said these things right under we unto you, that your joy may be full. There are two things that we need to have. Number one, we need to have fellowship with Jesus and fullness of joy. Now I will say this, the lost man does not have that ability. 
For the lost man does not have any ability to have fellowship with Jesus, for he has not come to Jesus. Jesus says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn to make right, meek and lowly, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. That truth is to the unbeliever, and it's also to the believer. But you must come to Christ before you have fellowship with Christ. He is writing to the believers. These, belie these, these options that we're talking about are for believers only. The unregenerate man has no option until he allows the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, the light of the world, to pierce through the darkness of sin in his sin sick soul. And he cries out with a repentant heart, Lord, save me. Until he does that, there is no place for fullness of joy or fellowship with Jesus. And men naturally love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil, John will tell us in John chapter 3. And they must come to the light that their deeds may be reproved by the glorious gospel of Christ. But the God of this world has blinded the mind of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine under them. We must preach the word to those that are lost. We must let those that are lost know that there is a way that seemeth right in the man within the earth are the ways of death. So that they can come into the place where they have an option of how to walk. But dear Christian, you have an option. There are contrasting options. There are clear options. You cannot walk in the light until you come to the light. He is writing to believers. Save folk. And for the saved, the options are clear. Walk in darkness or walk in light. Thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will thou not deliver my feet from falling that I may walk before God in the light of the living? The options are clear. Walk in darkness or walk in light. It is a choice. And I would ask you, where will you walk? Do we walk what we talk? The options are clear. They're as clear as day and night. They're as clear as darkness and light. But not only do I find them as clear, but they're contrasting. One is natural. The other is supernatural. As we know from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and, and from Hebrews chapter 5, there's those who uh, walk like the lost to some degree. Uh, uh, we'd say that they're very similar in that sense. They're, they're causing, I, he said, I speak to you as uh, I have to speak to you as babes, as carnal. He said, you ought to be teaching. We have to even one teaching again. The first things are the principles of Christ. He said, you ought to have grown, but you've not grown. You're still walking almost just like the lost man is walking. Now, you may not and should not and, and really would not go to the same excess of riot as them and still enjoy it. And the most Miserable person in the world is a child of God who is trying to live like the world. Why? Because he's grieving the Holy Ghost of God. He is vexing and grieving and, and bringing to the Holy Spirit into where the Holy Spirit is weeping. Do you want to break God's heart? But that's what we do when we walk in darkness and not in light. We hear the Holy Ghost challenge this kind. To grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, as he would say in first or 2 Peter 3.18. To add to our faith some things. To add to our faith. He tells us in 2 Peter, in uh, chapter 1, he tells us to add to your faith. Giving all diligence, add to your faith. And to virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to God and his brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall uh, neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
But he that lacketh these things is blind. The growing things that they did not add to his faith, these things, he is blind and cannot see afar off. And hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Not positionally forgotten that. You remember you got saved. But practically forgotten that. You remember the price that God paid for your sins. But you do not remember the power that God gave to give you victory over sin. They forgot. Have you ever been there to where you've drifted so far away you're wondering, does God even care? Though I know He cares. Is God even there? Though I know He's there. Because you've not been added. You've not been adding the things that needed to be added. I can't comprehend that that verse is completely had you forgotten that you've been purged of your old sins, but, but I believe that the Scripture is teaching that uh, you either grow forward or go backwards. You cannot stay neutral. You go forward or grow forward or go backwards. Not that in your mind and heart you forget about the experience of salvation, but that we can forget about the practical power received at salvation. We start to walk by sight and not by faith. He's saying that can happen to the child of God. And he warns us and warns us and warns us for he says the just shall live by faith. He continuously challenges us. We begin to talk our speech and not walk in fellowship. Here's what he says. We say that we have fellowship. And he said we lie. But in verse 7 he said we have fellowship. And he said we confess. John 8, 12 tells us then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There's a choice or the following of him. Walking in the light, there's a following of him. But walking in darkness, there's a failing of him. Us failing him. Either follow him or you fail him. The options of the walk, there are clear options and they are contrasting options. One is natural, one is supernatural. And we will bring that to the idea of the origin of the walk. Darkness is natural. What is darkness? Who knows what darkness is? Anybody? I'll even let you answer. Who knows what darkness is? Nobody knows. I will give you, yes sir. The absence of light. The absence of light. God did not say, let there be darkness in Genesis chapter 1. He said, and the earth was without void, form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's natural. There is no need for an or origin for something that is just there. It's always there. God did not say let there be darkness. Darkness needs no origin. But light has an origin. It is supernatural. God said let there be light. And there was light. He spake the light out of darkness. Let me say he said, let there be light before there was a sun. For God is the light of the world. He said, let there be light on the first day. It was the fourth day before he ever produced the sun. He said, why was that? Because God said, I'm making something that's supernatural. Light is of God. And let me say, verse 4 of Genesis 1 tells us light is good. And God saw the light 
that it was good. It had an, uh, an origin supernatural. Light comes from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God is light, he tells us in verse number 5 of our portion of Scripture, and in him is uh, no darkness at all. In John 1, 4, in him was life, and the light was the light of men. And the light shines the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It could not understand it. It could not grasp it. It could not hold down the light. Can I say, darkness cannot stop light. It might not drift out into how bright the light is, it might keep it from being able to be seen at a farther distance in a good, great way. But just a little bit of light can shine a far away if it's very dark. The darker it is, the more the light seen in the darkness. You say, what happened during the dark times of your life? And you look away unto Jesus and he lights up your life. And the world gets darker and drifts farther and farther away. Uh, that little church on the side of the street uh, that's, that's shining forth the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. People say, hey, that's bothering me. I don't want light. I want darkness because I don't want nobody to see what I'm doing. Or they will come to the light. Now I'll tell you two things about light. Just to be honest with you. Thieves either come to it or they scatter from it. And in this cockroach society we live in, there's two kinds of bugs. Now I told people before, when I lived in Tennessee and got saved, and uh, we'd sit there and drink iced tea and we'd have bug zappers outside. And we'd watch the bugs. And they'd get zapped by the light. They got consumed by the light. But I'd go in some people's houses and I'd turn the lights on and I'd see things moving. I realized they had cockroaches because cockroaches scatter when the light's on. They like dirt and they like darkness and they like dampness. But then there's some other kind of bugs that just come to the light and get consumed. Light either attracts or deflects sin and sinners. It'll cause sin to be scattered. And if that sinner wants sin, he will not come to the light. But if that sinner's sick of sin, he says, I've got to get to the light. Supernatural. The Lord God is the sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. So we see the origin of the light. But our, the origin of our walk in the light is also of God. Light, we find in our portion of Scripture, comes from the book of God. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His Word is not in us. If we, walk, if we get in the book, Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproof of instruction is a way of life. Light comes from the book of God. And let me say this. Light comes from the blessedness of God. The blessedness of the person of Christ. We see in verses 1 through 3, that which is from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon our hands and handled the word of life, for the life was manifest, and we have seen it and bear witness and shown you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. The blessedness of the person of Christ. That is a lie. When you tell people about how good God is, how gracious God is, how much and it'll just shine a light, and they'll say, I either want that or I don't. As he's pleading with them. As we declare him and he pleads with them, come unto me. 
the blessedness of the person of Christ. And but there's also the light that comes from the blessedness of God, the blessedness of the power of cleansing. Verse 7, he tells us, but if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Verse number 9, we confess our sins, he's faithful just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me say the origin of the light for our walk is God. It is in the book of God, and it is from the blessedness of God. Both in the person of Christ and the power of his cleansing. Oh, when we see the power of His cleansing, we find ourselves sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. We find ourselves dirty. We find ourselves deceived. We find ourselves in despair. But we see the light. I can be cleaned by the power of His cleansing through the person of the cross. So we see the outcome of our walk. The outcome of our walk. He tells us in our portion of scripture here, we walk in darkness and we say we have fellowship with him. We dark walk in darkness. We lie and do not the truth. So we find the contrast of our walks are to walk in darkness. Three things about that walk of darkness is there is dirtiness in that walk of darkness. You say, how do you know there's dirtiness? Well, we lie and do not the truth. That sounds pretty dirty to me. But he also tells us that's in contrast to chapter 7, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us. If there was nothing to cleanse us from, verse number 7 tells us he cleanses us. Verse number 9 tells us he cleanses us. If there was nothing to cleanse us from, but he cleanses us because we are 